Do you like ISK? I like ISK, that is for sure. And the Winter Nexus event is back and it comes with combat sites that make loads of money. But you will need a ship and a fit to run them. And luckily, I got both of them right here. So if you want to make some 200 to 300 million power in a cheap praxis, I got the fit right here for you. And I will show you how to run it. Not only that, but technically it even works for alphas too. So that is a great benefit on top of that. So if you want to find out how you can make that big bug ISK, go ahead and watch this video as we get right into it. But playing EVE alone sucks. So if you want to take part in an awesome community, fly fun ships, make some dang ISK and have genuinely a good time with constantly people around you to hang out with. So come and join Suspect today and fight under the banner of our great supreme leader, me. So come and join our Discord today. Anyway, on with the video. With the winter event back, we have an event back that I like to call um the ISK printer because of just how easy, consistent and widespread it is across the whole galaxy. But how do you find out where this event is even running? Well, you can find it out very easily by just opening your F10 map and filtering for metaluminal storms. Almost all, except very few exceptions in Nullsec, should be winter event storms and not just normal storms. In those, you can find all the sites involved in this event and those are the ones that we are taking a look at today, specifically the combat sites. Because in my experience, they are the ones making the most ISK, and they are actually not hard whatsoever, so yeah, we're gonna take a look at them. And all we need to run them is a very cheap car. It's not actually a car, but it's a spaceship. It's just a very ugly spaceship. It is the Praxis. I think it's very ugly, but maybe that's just me. Why are we actually using the Praxis? Well, first off, it is cheap, almost half the cost of a normal battleship. It has also a very super low skill intensity because you need no skills to fly it whatsoever and you will have max bonuses on it whatsoever, even with no skills. And it does the job just right. So it is the perfect ship if you're relatively new to the game and you don't want to spend that much and it is actually one of the faster options so like using a Taekwondo battle ship might not even be worth it. In other words, it is exactly what we want. The Praxis in question that we have right here is an active tank Praxis with some tech tumors but mostly just meta models. That is because this ship is very tight on fitting space, so going tech 2 might not even be possible. But the more important part here is that this ship is cap stable. And not being cap stable in this case would be a really bad thing considering that the NPCs do nude but they also do a lot of damage. And if they do a lot of damage this means if we have no more capacitor we might just die and we kinda don't wanna die so um, so being a tiny bit more cap stable is just what we kinda want here. And that is kinda what we get with this fitting. So that is a good thing. Otherwise you go to the ship rapid heavy missile launchers for better application with faction missiles and armor drones as that is the damage that those NPCs are the weakest to and faction drones on top of that because faction drones have more HP you do not want tech 2 drones because tech 2 drones while they do more damage are actually um squishier they die and that is something we want to avoid so we go with navy drones because they are not so expensive but they are pretty good for what you want all in all this foot should get you about at least 800 dps if you have any skills. And if you have good skills or decent skills, I don't have good skills, at least not with missiles. If you have good skills, you should end up like me with about 1000 DPS, as long as you utilize both drones and missiles. So that is the damage and that is the tank and both of them are actually very good. And they will do the job just fine, but there's one very important thing next to tank and DPS. And it is very important because it keeps you alive and that is a micro jump drive. You may not understand why that is the case just yet, but you will understand later when we actually go down to how to run those sites. So just keep in mind that this one little button will be very important later on. Cost-wise, we are looking at a relatively pricey fit due to Tech 2 rigs, but luckily that is set off by the fact that the hull is very cheap to begin with, making it still cost all in all about 350 million or less than a single tier 1 battleship. And yes, of course, you can find the whole fitting in the video description. Don't be silly, I posted it there for you. We got the fitting out of the way, now we're getting to the actual important part and that is how do you actually run those sites. First off, we have to discuss the sites themselves. They differ from space to space, specifically the loot differs, the sites themselves not so much. Highsec has the lowest payout and is most likely the safest area and most accessible area to do those sites. Lowsec has actually the highest payout but is obviously being between Highsec and Noldsec, also the more accessible area of space but also the one that is most likely the more hunted in area. So that is an option you can take, but the option I went with personally is Nullsec because that is closer in loot to low sec than high sec, but it is also space that is 
pretty safe, especially if you live with other players, and you can basically shut down the entire space if you want to, and if you're in a decently good group. And you also have obviously the good option of joining my glorious corp, because that is just a sneaky suggestion I want to throw in here. It just ignore me here. Wormholes, I can't comment on wormholes. I don't know if they actually have those signs. I heard so, I heard otherwise, and I don't want to judge on wormholes, so I'm just gonna skip over them right here. I can't really judge them. Like I said before, to find out where you actually run those sites, you just have to open your F10 map and filter the meta limo storms and go to one of those storms and go to a system that actually has a storm active. You can also use the filaments that are available for this event, as I just show them right here, and basically use the low sec and null sec filaments to get into low sec or null sec and use a high sec filament to get back into high sec. That is also an option if you want to transport other things, but that is kind of an option you have to if you just want to fast travel to those event sites. If you obviously live next to one, there's kind of no point in using a filament, but it is something you should consider if you don't live next to one and you didn't set up a base yet. Once you're in those systems, that is when the important things happen. Because the first thing you want to do is check local chat if there's gang cards, hostiles, whatever on your system. If there's if you're null sec and your space should be friendly, keep an eye that there's preferably no hostiles in your system before you start the site, because that would be kind of um, disadvantageous, let's say it this way. So once you have checked local, make sure to descan as well, and make sure that the site you're warping to has no one inside of it. For that, you can just walk to a site, set the descan range to 1 AU, and just see if anyone is in there. And if that is the case, you might want to go to the next site, especially if it is a not friendly player. And even if it's a friendly player, you don't want to steal a site, so just go to the next one, there's enough of them. But once you find a clear site, ta-da, there you go. You have a site that has no one in it. And generally, every site ha that has at some point been warped to will have a beacon in the system, allowing direct warp to it. And those are the sites that you kind of don't want to use. But this brings me also to the biggest danger of those signs in the first place. Other players, because they are the ones that will kill you, not the site itself. Once you found your site, warp to it and make sure that no one else is in it. You want to make sure that no one else comes in that has the intention, especially the intention to murder you. That would be very bad because dying is not cool whatsoever. So what you want to do is keep an eye on local chat, keep an eye on the scan if a neutral actually warps to you. And especially once you went inside, you want to hit your MJD, so you get 100km distance from the entry point, because that entry point is where everyone will land, who takes the acceleration gate. But taking that gate also puts you in a dead space, meaning once you're inside, no one can warp to inside of this dead space area, and even if they combat prop you down, they will have to take the same acceleration gate, meaning those 100km are 100km they have to fly to actually get to you. And that is just 100km of extra time you have to get away. The NPCs in the side, however, will simply walk back on top of you, so you do not actually have to worry about range, so don't worry about that. Just remember that this tip is mainly for safety. Your safety, because I care for you, I'm amazing, I know, you don't have to tell me. I just thought I would bring this in here because, well, the sides are important, I thought safety is more important. But let's get to how you run the sides themselves, and they are very easy. You want to put your drones on frigates and your missiles on all cruisers for bigger. If your drones are targeted by the NPCs, you just want to recall your drones and redeploy them again. This will reset the drone aggression and make sure your drones don't die. Just remember to also once in a while repair them, preferably at a player station so the repairs are free. Each side has three waves in total. While they vary in size, the third wave always has only a final battleship, which also includes all your loot. So you don't need to salvage anything, you just need to pick up the loot on that final battleship. So you loot the battleship, rinse and repeat. If you struggle for tank, remember to heat your hardness, heat your shield booster and make sure you have at least trouble dynamics one before you go in here. I kind of should have told it earlier, but who cares? The site also has a bonus to heating, meaning you can heat more and more efficiently. But if you really struggle a lot, you can actually replace the MJD for a second shield boost amplifier. I wouldn't suggest so, because you're kind of giving up all the safety you have. So just remember, if you do that, that it makes it more dangerous when it comes to other players and I'm not taking any guarantee in being able to save you. But this is basically all. The loot itself, you can sell off for amazing profit. And just now, make is to your heart's content. This event is amazing when it comes to its generation, or more specifically until the event is over. But this is all for today. Next time, I will explain to you how you run the sites efficiently in a Marauder. So that is gonna happen next time. But if you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and maybe check out my other videos. So see you next time.